scripture in the New Testament where a group of people came up to Jesus, mm-hmm. and I don't remember where it is. It's in the it's in the four four Gospels. A group of people came up to Jesus and they said to him, "Why do you talk to us in riddles and metaphors and symbols? Mm-hmm. Why do you talk to us in riddles?" And the scripture says that without riddles and metaphors, Jesus never said a word to no one. Anything he said was a metaphor and a riddle. And so the people came up to him and said, why do you speak to us? Why don't you just tell us outright what you want us to know instead of speaking with these strange riddles that you come up with, these strange symbolic stories? Why don't you just tell us? And he said, I speak in riddles because I don't want you to get the truth. I don't want you to know the truth. I don't want anything to do with you because I know your heart. I know who you really are. I know what you really live like. And I don't want anything to do with you. So I speak in riddles so that only the God spirit will let you open your eyes, spiritually speaking, to see what the real truth is. I speak in riddles because I don't want you to get the message. I don't want you to see the light. I want you to continue in your same dark light that you live in, in your ignorance and ill-informed ignorance. I don't want you to get the light and the truth so that you will change your life and become a better person. I don't want you to know the truth. That's why I speak in riddles. So that's the name of that tune. Mm. And and isn't it more intelligent, Jordan, actually? Because, you know, when, when you're teaching somebody, and I've had to teach people a lot of things in, in, in life, even when I, when, when I worked at certain businesses. I've had to teach people procedures and, oh, how to do things, let's just say, in, in general. Mm-hmm. If you can relate it to something else, you're teaching in metaphor when you say, well, think of it like this. Th- this is the most effective way. You know why? Because it actually makes them have to go through the process of thinking about it, relating it to something that they're comfortable with. And That's right. You know, mm-hmm. they actually have to work to get to it. It, it, it. It's like that that old phrase about throwing your pearls before swine. Now, swine don't know That's what right. to do with pearls. That's right. But somebody but else. But that's why we have something called Aesop's <laughs> fables. Aesop's fables. Yes. The old, the old fable that we tell the children about the race between the tortoise and the hare, between the rabbit and the tortoise. And it's an old story I heard when I was a child. Mm-hmm. And it was an old story. It's called Aesop's fables. And the idea of the story was that the tortoise and the, and the rabbit challenged each other to a race. And the rabbit took off and ran wide open and got right up to the uh, to the finish line. And to be arrogant and self-centered and smart aleck, he laid down by the finish line, but he didn't cross the finish line. He laid down to take a nap because he's run all the way and it's already there and the, and the tortoise hadn't even moved yet. And so the tortoise finally starts to move very slow and the rabbit sound asleep. And the tortoise keeps working and just very, very slowly keeps moving toward the goal line. And very quietly, he walks across the goal line, the the tortoise does, and he won the race. And so that teaches a child, just because you're smart, because you're handsome, because you're wealthy, that doesn't mean you're going to win the race. Just because you got all the money and you look good and you got everything going for you, you may end up with a cancer and dying while some old man in, 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 in some foreign country may work all of his life to build a, a house and to have his home and to have a family. And he's got a wonderful family, a beautiful home. He's got everything a man could want. And But he didn't run. He's not fast like you and clever like you and wealthy. He's just a poor working class person who ends up at the end of his life with a lovely family, a wife and children and grandchildren and great grandchildren. And you ended up on drugs with an overdose in the hospital and died a horrible death. You ended up in a horrible accident because you were crazy in your driving. So just because you're smart and clever and wealthy doesn't mean you're going to win the race. It's the slow who win the race, not the fast, not the clever, not the resourceful. 
And so it teaches a child. It's called Aesop's Fable. Well, that's what the Bible is. We talk about Bible codes. Well, the entire story is a code. It's encoded inside of a mystery. And we, and we understand that this, the whole Bible is a metaphor. It's a symbolic story. Mm-hmm. And the symbolism, as we leave this show today, the symbolism of the Bible, especially the New Testament story of Jesus, is the war going on on the earth between ignorance and light, light and darkness. The light is considered to be good and wonderful, and the dark is evil and frightening. And I can understand why children are afraid of the dark. I understand that. But I don't understand how grown, intelligent people are frightened to death of the light. They don't want to hear the truth and the light. They're not interested in truth and the light. They will tell you, give us Barabbas. We want to hear the same old silly stories and all the lies and deception that the politicians can come up with, what the clergy of the church can come up with. We want to hear all the lies. Why? Because we like them. We like these people because they're like us. We're liars and they're liars and we know they're lying. Mm-hmm. And we want to believe what they're telling us is the truth. And that's why we give a lot of money so that the clergyman in the church can buy his $7 million jet plane and live in a $14 million beautiful home off the ocean. Right. And so that's the way the world works. We don't want the truth. We can't handle the truth. Mm-hmm. And so that's what I've been trying and you've been trying and other people like us are trying to do is do something for the human family by enlightening the human family Mm -hmm. so we can understand who we are, where we've come from, and you better start uh, checking on authority. You better start questioning authority and what you believe because the whole world is lying in the power of the wicked one. The scripture said the entire world is lying in the power of the devil, Mm -hmm. which is simply putting a D in front of the word evil. Evil with a D becomes devil, and God without good without the old becomes God. God is good, the devil is evil. You better go back and start doing some homework and find out what you think you believe and what you think you know. You have no idea in the world where it really came from and that you're missing out because you're self-centered, egotistical, like the Pharisees. That's why Jesus condemned the Pharisees, because they knew everything. They don't need anything. They know they got the law. They know they are the Pharisees and the scribes. The scribes write scripture. The scribes were, uh, were condemned by Jesus because they write all the Christian books. The scribes are the writers. They write all the Christian books. You go into a Christian bookstore, you see thousands of Christian books by people who are writers who believe that they understand what's going on and they're trying to tell you. And point of fact, under the heat of day and under the heat of of investigation, you find they don't know what they're talking about. They have no idea what the words mean, where the ideas have come from. They haven't studied the uh, comparative religions and comparative philosophies. It's an incredible world of ignorance that the human family finds itself in today. And I'm trying to do something about it by trying to enlighten the people of this world that the governments and the religions, their banking and their educational institutions, the military, the entire world of mankind is lying in the power of darkness, stupidity and right. ignorance. Well, here's the thing to remember about that, and it's a very simple lesson. Again, you, you, you remind me of childhood lessons all the time, Jordan, because sometimes we need to take things back to the most basic elements. I think right. uh, mm-hmm. when when I was a, a bit afraid of the dark as a small child, I remember being told that, uh, look, y- you have no reason to be afraid. The same thing that is there in the dark is there in the light. It's the same thing. So if you're not afraid to be there in the light, you shouldn't be afraid to be there in the dark. OK, and and it sounds silly, right? But but here's the, you're right. But here's the great point about it is that it really doesn't matter if you insist on keeping your eyes closed, whether it's light or dark, does it? 
And that's, that's, right. that's what, I, what I feel inspired to say here at the end, is that if, if you want to insist on not looking, not using your senses, not using all of the gifts that were granted you by virtue of your creation, yep. regardless of who you think created you, uh, whether you think it's just your parents or you think that, you know, a stork brought you, it doesn't matter, I don't care. Point is... Well, like I have said... Mm -hmm that uh, your brain is like a parachute. It don't work if it's not open. <laughs> you need to have an open mind to learn and read and understand you are nothing but a product of the culture you were born into. Right. If you were Chinese, you would believe what Chinese believe. If you were Africans, you believe what Africans believe. If you were uh, Catholic, you believe what Catholics believe. You need to wake up and understand all the world is believing what their culture has taught them. And our culture has taught us nothing, well, period. But just like period. the tortoise and the hare, because you began the race that way, does not mean that that's the way it has to end. 